Hello, I'm Zed Survivor. Today, we're talking about electronic skill. How to level it up and what it provides. The electrical skill affects your knowledge and efficiency manipulating electrical components and dismantling items that are considered electronics. Let's first talk about leveling. Electronic skill is known to be one of the hardest skills to level up. To start with this skill, the most important tool that you must have is the screwdriver. Literally every electronic recipe or dismantle requires it. You can find these in maintenance cabinets, hardware stores, mechanic garages, vehicles, etc. After you read the book and got the screwdriver, it's time to start dismantling to get XP. What items can you dismantle? Everything that has electronics in them. You can use the crafting way, this would be radios, flashlights, headphones, CD players, cordless phones, digital watches, earbuds, speakers, home alarms, and even TVs. Or you can use the right click dismantle option to dismantle things like lamps, TVs, air conditioners, and more. There is one item that should not be dismantled because it's rare and has a much better use, and that is the TV remote. We will talk about its use later. So as you dismantle, you will notice that the skill is going up very slowly and that you have tons of random materials in your inventory. The most important is the electric scrap. This is used in almost every, if not every, recipe. The copper wire is used for making makeshift communication devices. Light bulbs can be placed in lamps and cars, aluminum is used for making aerosol bombs and also communication devices. Radio receivers are used for triggers and makeshift communication devices. Radio transmitters are for makeshift walkie-talkies and radios, and amplifiers, which are used for noisemakers. Now, you got those materials and maybe you got a little bit of experience. What can you craft with all of that? Well, first we need to talk about traps and explosives that are supposed to be combined with electronic components. You may have noticed that there is an engineer occupation that unlocks traps and explosive knowledge. Currently there are 5 available traps you can make. The smoke bomb, the noisemaker, pipe bomb, fire bomb and aerosol bomb. Without the engineer occupation you can only craft the non-lethal traps which are the smoke bomb and the noisemaker. You do that by finding the magazines that are scattered around the world. There's only two of them for each trap. With the occupation you have all the traps unlocked, both lethal and non-lethal. I won't discuss the traps in this guide, but if you guys want me to make a guide on them too, leave a comment and I will. So, how can you combine these traps and electronics? Well, there are multiple ways to set off your trap. You can use the regular throw with the lighter, or you can get creative by making timers, remote control triggers, or motion sensors. You can add them to your trap and activate them by time, by a remote control device, or motion. All of these recipes are locked and are only available to the electrician, or if you can find the four available magazines and read them. This will allow you to craft and add these modifications. So, let's start with the timer. To craft it, you need an alarm clock or a timer, screwdriver, electronic scrap and glue, also known recipe, and electrical one. You can add it to your traps and set a timer before it explodes. I like to use this by setting a long timer and placing it near a vehicle with a siren. Activate the siren and hide. After the timer counts to zero, the bomb will go off and it will damage all the zombies that have grouped up near the vehicle. Next, the motion sensor. It's a really rare component and can be found in house alarm items if you dismantle them. Don't mistake this for the actual in-game alarm that goes off, it's just an item which is really rare, and it can be found in bedroom drawers. When you add this to your bomb, you can place it and the countdown will start. After the countdown reaches zero, the motion sensor will activate. After it's active, any moment around the small area around it will cause it to activate the bomb. There are more versions of the motion sensor. V1, V2, and V3. The V1 basically has the lowest range and you need less electrical skill for it. The better the version, the more electrical skill it's required to craft. But the range is better. The last, but not least, the remote controlled activation is achieved by making a trigger and a remote controller. 
This is when we need their TV remote. It's to make the remote controller. There are three versions, the V1, V2 and V3, just like the motion sensor. Basically, bigger the number, the more the range it got and more electrical skill it's required to craft. Now, you will need a crafted trigger. It is crafted with a radio receiver, electronic scrap and glue. How this works is that you attach the trigger onto your bomb and link it with the remote controller. After you place the bomb, you can activate the remote controller and it will detonate all bombs linked to this device. Remember, the more complicated the recipes, the more skill in electrical you will need. I always use the Zomboid Wiki for reference and if you're interested in all of these recipes, you should go check it out, link in the description. One thing I mentioned before were makeshift communication devices and we can call them MCDs because it's shorter. Well, MCDs are not exactly that useful, especially in single player. Even in multiplayer, they have really short range. And of course, all of us will just use a third party software like Discord to communicate with our friends. But if you do wish to make them, you must learn the recipes from the Gorilla Radio magazines. The more skill you have, the less weight, power consumption, and the more range your devices will have. To connect walkie talkies, you must set the same frequency as your friend and then select tune in. By typing text into the local chat, your friend will be able to hear you. You can make your own walkie talkies by MCDs, but why not just find one and use that instead? Or install a third party software and use that. If you wish to roleplay and use the walkie talkies and the ham radios and all of that, I am fully supporting that decision, but I will stick to Discord. Electronic skill also helps you with repairing your generators. The bigger level you have, the more efficiently you will repair them. If you have trouble finding the components, there is a rare house spawn that will have the kitchen full of rare electronic components. This is supposed to be a former electrician house. Here you can find the remote triggers, timers, magazines, remote controller devices, motion sensors and many other useful goodies. Now it's time for the tip of the video. As I said, MCDs are not that useful, but there is a use for them. With enough practice, it is possible to use both makeshift and regular communication devices to distract zombies. If you place down a walkie-talkie and talk to it, zombies will get attracted to that noise. You might find a use for this. That's it for this video. I know it's a little bit longer, but electronics is a really complex topic. If you have anything else to add, post it in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new.